Hey guys, this is Mike with Come Tonight. Welcome back to another reaction video. Today we are taking a look at an article released just before the end of the year by our friends at Loudwire. Now, before we jump into this, I just want to put out there I'm not trying to dog on Loudwire. This isn't going to be me trying to dismantle them and discredit them. This is not what this is about. I will be critical of some things. That's just my nature to do that. That means no animus towards this publication. And I will do my best to qualify all of my statements as much as possible. Uh, there's a lot of of stuff in here, so I might miss something. So Loudwire did an article saying 2019 will be rock and metal's biggest year in a long time. And there'll be a link to that down below. I don't know about you, I was very intrigued by this headline. When I retweeted it on Twitter, I got a lot more feedback on trying to do a video on this than I was anticipating. <laughs> to quickly run through it here, the beginning talks about it's no secret that rock and metal have fallen from the commercial peaks at which they once stood. And he goes on for several paragraphs basically saying how rock and metal basically cannot compete marketability or financially with hip hop and pop or even country for that matter. Then coming to a couple paragraphs down where he says 2019 however is beginning to feel like a new dawn for the beloved genres. Numerous A-list acts will be returning with new albums including Slipknot, Rammstein, the legendary Megadeth and hopefully, hopefully Tool. And that's a very good qualifier to put in front of that one. It's been years since we've had new releases from any of those names, let alone all in one year. Now, I believe they either linked or just kind of copy pasted their most anticipated albums for 2019 down below this article because there's 65 artists that they have listed below as far as rock and metal guys who are gonna be releasing in 2019. That's a hell of a lot. And while I wouldn't necessarily call all of these people A-listers, there's a lot of really big names on here who don't usually release that often and it's very coincidental that all of them very likely will be releasing an album in 2019. Now on face value you could say, holy cow, that's awesome. Man, this could be our chance to make a comeback. And that's what I think that this article is trying to set up the story as. Now, I'll be 100% honest. I don't know if the writer actually believes that this is going to have any substantial impact on making metal more prominent in the community. I think he just had to frame a story a certain way to make it more compelling for the reader when they read it. But because he did it this way, I'm going to have to take him at face value because I cannot read his mind. So, I wasn't sure if I could believe that or not because it sounds highly implausible. So I went through every single artist that they had listed and basically gave very brief feedback on how much I give a shit about them releasing a new album and also graded them it just on my own personal metrics. There's no scientific shit here about how much I figured they would break through the mainstream, how much I felt that they were actually trying to break conventions and also uh, how old each of these bands were. I'm going to put a little counter in a ding every time we have a band on this list that was formed after 2005. I think there's one band that was formed at before 2005, but I gave them a pass and there's a reason why. And there's another band that was formed on 2005. So why did I pick bands that were formed after 2005? The reason being is because I want to see how many fresh faces are on this list for new releases in 2019. If you're going to talk about trying to penetrate the market and really get in there, you need fresh faces because everything with the hot billboard is what's new, what's fresh. I give it as back as 2005 because it takes bands uh, 10 to 15 years to really get established. And some bands it takes a lot longer, but you know, for bands that have been in the underground for a long time and break through the mainstream, I don't know if I can really count that or not. The easiest metric for me to do without having to do way too much research for this video was bands that were formed at 2005. If they're being shouted out on this list and they were formed after 2005, that means that they, they took off and they did great. So I tried to be generous with this one, and I, I might not have graded everything appropriately depending upon how you look at my standards, so if I make any mistakes, please let me know in the comments below. Here are the bands that either will be or are projected to release new material in 2019. ACDC. This is just gonna be more of the same. They always release the same. You know my feelings on this. 
I guess it's better than having more mumble rap. Ultra Bridge, uh, I actually think this could be pretty cool. I've enjoyed just about everything I've listened to from Creed 2.0. Amon Amarth, uh, I wouldn't say that this is necessarily my thing, but I mean, everything I've listened to seems like it's very cool in that like Viking type of way. So yeah, I mean like, I'm, I'm sure someone's gonna enjoy this a lot. Andy Black. Why is he on this list? Yeah, I understand he was with the Black Veil Brides, but after listening to his his solo release, it sounds a lot more like Maroon 5 than even rock and roll. So I'm disqualifying him from this list. Anthrax, uh, I enjoy their newer stuff much more than their later stuff, it could be cool. Asking Alexandria, uh, this is a fresh face, and I do think that they're trying to do stuff to make, to break some conventions, but also at the same time, the, their sound change, their very drastic sound change from where they were to where they are now, I don't agree with how they're trying to break conventions because they're basically stealing pop conventions with the shittiest of pop conventions. I'm not gonna say that their new stuff is crap because it, it's just really not my taste. I haven't really been able to sit down and absorb it and, and take a good critical look at it. I kind of just glanced over it because frankly, I don't like it, but I feel like, just based upon my cursory glance, they sacrificed a lot of musicianship for accessibility, and I don't think that that's a good thing. Avatar has some new stuff coming up. They are not only a fresh face, but I would say they definitely are trying to break some conventions and in some really cool ways. Everything I've listened to from Avatar, I have not been bored by, and they've kept me interested. I wouldn't say I necessarily love everything, per se, but, I mean, these guys consistently keep it interesting, even if I don't necessarily like it. I'm interested to see what they do on their new album. Avenged Sevenfold, right on the cusp, but not technically a new face. I really love the title track to the stage, and the rest of the album was like, it was okay. I didn't fall in love with it, but I didn't hate it. I'm not dying for a new album, but I'll most likely give it a listen. Body Count, not really my thing, so no. Bring Me the Horizon, uh, I think they're also trying to break some conventions, but again, they kind of have that Asking Alexandria disease. I think it's very interesting seeing these bands who have pretty similar sounds in their infant stages evolve into similar evolutions in their now pop stage. And by the way, show of hands for fans of Bring Me the Horizon and Asking Alexandria back in the day when they were actually metalcore or whatever the fuck you would want to call it. Are you excited for these new albums now, having listened to their latest work? Show of hands in the comments, please. Buck Cherry. Yeah, no thanks. Oh, I forgot one metric. Another metric I wanted to add here was in my personal opinion, who has the best shot of breaking through on the mainstream? Which, by the way, Bring Me the Horizon and Asking Alexandria, no, I don't think they will. But ACDC is on that list for sure, and Buck Cherry definitely is too, although, I mean, I'll be honest, no thanks. Carcass, uh, they're also projected to have some new stuff. Definitely not my thing, but I'm sure those moshes are insane. I'd be game to do that. And uh, props to the lead guitar player. Chevelle. Don't really like this band, to be honest. No hate towards them, but I mean, there's just really no evolution going on here. Children of Bodom. Uh, this will most likely be a lot of fun. I have never been bored listening to a Children of Bodom song, and I typically find myself leaning towards enjoying it or just loving it outright. Dark Throne. <laughs> Definitely not for me. <laughs> Death Angel. I had actually never heard of these guys before, and apparently they're one of the originators of that 80s uh, thrash metal. I gave a cursory look over their last release, 2016. What's it called? The Evil Divide. If the new album sounds like that, I could possibly be down. Last album was a little bit too verby and too vibey for me. I wouldn't call it bad, just not necessarily my taste. It just felt a little lost, if you will. We'll see how this turns out. Also, I don't consider them breaking conventions anymore. Devin Townsend, I'm actually very much looking forward to this because apparently he's doing a bunch of collaborations, including frickin' Chad Kroger from Nickelback. I'm interested just to see how that turned out. Devin Townsend does a lot of cool stuff. I wouldn't consider him breaking conventions any longer. Dream Theater, regardless of my feelings of the single that we reviewed, which by the way, that's starting to grow on me more as I listen to it. But uh, I'm still really stoked. This is my most anticipated release for 2019, hands down. Evanescence has some new material they're gonna throw out. Uh, I would not call their last release rock. 
If that is the new direction that they are headed, I would not include them on this list, but that seems to be an outlier at this point, so I'm unsure. And that's not to say that it's bad. I actually thought it was pretty cool, and as a matter of fact, I put them down as trying to break some conventions here and try to go explore outside of the little narrow box that they put themselves into. But it definitely was not rock. I would not qualify it as rock. Exodus, um, eh. They included Filter on this list, and the only song I know from them is Hey Man, Nice Shot. Great song, I love it. And a cursory glance at their last album, that's an industrial no from me. Flesh God Apocalypse. Now, when I looked into these guys, they didn't say it, but I would say, is it symphonic death metal? Because, I mean, I don't listen to a whole lot of symphonic death metal to know for sure. These guys are a fresh face, and it's not really my vibe, but they're definitely not boring. Halloween's got some new stuff coming out. Uh, their last album was fun. I can't say that I'm anticipating it, but I'm also not cringing, so there's that. Hell yeah. Uh, they may have formed in 2006, but they are comprised a, a super group of a bunch of very established names, so they do not count as a fresh face. Pretty brutal, but I can't say that I'm excited. Highly suspect, these guys are a fresh face. Uh, interesting. I haven't really listened to much by them, and what I have, again, cursory glance. I would say that some of the songs feel more hit or miss for me. Don't know if I would include them on the breaking conventions list or not. In Flames, uh, don't hate the sound change, but I can't say I'm really anticipating another album. King Diamond's releasing new material. He has some really nice songwriting on his last album. Can't say that I care for his falsetto anymore. I mean, between the fact that it's just been played out and the fact that it's so weak now, it's almost, it, I mean, I shouldn't say almost, it's very cringy. I almost feel bad for him at this point. Kill Switch Engage has some new stuff. Uh, this will probably be enjoyable for me. Korn is releasing new material. I will be honest, the last album had some surprises for me. However, I don't know if I could be less interested in their new release. Lamb of God. Definitely not my style yet again, but it is brutal as fuck. I'm sure at least one of you will get me to listen to it on Song Suggestion Friday. Legion of the Damned? No. Also, not sure if I've heard of these guys before or not. Limp Biscuit. Is this a joke? Show of hands who gives a fuck whether Limp Biscuit records and releases music ever again. I am very interested to hear your feedback in the comment section. And yes, I have heard feedback from people saying that the actual band members are incredibly talented and Fred Durst is the one that basically drags them down to how shitty he is. And, you know, it's still Limp Biscuit, man. Chain is only as strong as its weakest biscuit. Mastodon has some new stuff, most likely coming out in 2019. I can't say that I love this band, but everything I listen to is really cool, and I'm interested to see what they do. Megadeth, you guys have heard me bitch a lot about Megadeth on this channel, and I actually did like the last album, especially Dave's vocals, 100% in the right direction. If he goes with the same vocal style as what he did on the last album, I could probably get down with this one. Ministry, not garbage, but definitely not my style. Uh, at least the newer stuff anyway. Misery Index, haven't heard of these guys before. They are definitely very talented, a little extreme on the drums for my tastes, and I mean, vocally, eh. Mushroom Head, I include these guys in trying to break conventions. It doesn't always work, and that's what I was gonna say. I can't say that I'm excited, per se, for a new album, but I always find it interesting. It could be great. They're a very hit or miss band for me. Napalm Death, appropriately named. Not really looking forward to it, to be honest. Nightwish, they make some neat stuff from time to time. Can't say I'm very excited for a new album. Nothing more. I haven't listened to a bunch by these guys. A cursory look at their last album. I mean, a new release could be cool. They have a shot at breaking into the mainstream, but a very tiny shot. Of Mice and Men. A fresh face. I think they have a cool, fresh take on a very familiar sound. It'll be cool to see what they come up with next. Overkill. Speaking of Overkill, anyone notice that there is an obnoxious amount of thrash bands on this list? They're cool enough, I guess, just like every other fucking 80s thrash band. Papa Roach. I listened to Cursory, the last album. Eh, it's not crap. Just too pop metal at points for my tastes. I kind of forgot about these guys, to be honest, so I really don't give shit. Periphery, they're barely a new face at this point, but I will let them qualify, partly because I'm also biased. I look forward to what they're putting out. Queensryche's putting out some new stuff. My only question is which one? I don't know how the fuck to pronounce this right, but the Reconteurs or whatever. I've never heard of this Jack White project before. 
Uh, I don't anticipate any of his work ever. Rammstein, it'll be cool to see what they come up with. It's been interesting to see how their sounds evolved. Red Hot Chili Peppers, these guys definitely have at least somewhat of a shot of breaking through to the mean stream. It'll be cool to see what they do. Rob Zombie's got some new stuff, and that's been a while, too. Um, it's always interesting to see what he comes up with. I don't always like it, but you know it's going to be weird. Sabaton, I think they do some cool stuff, and it'd be great to see a live show. Can't say that I would ever go out of my way to buy an album. Septic Flesh, I actually like these guys' music quite a bit. The vocals absolutely ruin this for me. If this next album is an instrumental album, I am actually very much looking forward to that. Say Anything, I think that they're trying to break a little bit of musical convention. I think they have a shot at possibly breaking the mainstream, but uh, if I can say anything, can I say no? Slipknot, I did not include these guys on breaking into the mainstream because I think they're already pigeonholed into never being able to actually compete with the Billboard 100. In the article, they say that Slipknot's last album debuted at number one, not on the overall chart. There's no fucking way that it debuted at number one on the overall chart. If it's on the rock metal chart, yeah, I believe that it debuted at number one. Just because it debuts at number one in our little microcosm does not mean it's breaking out into the mainstream. I'm gonna have to check this out by obligation because I'm sure you guys are gonna bug the shit out of me and I'm sure the Fine Brothers will have another fucking group of people react to them and then I'll have to make a video on that. Wonderful. But I would not say I am excited for a new release. Soil Work, seeing their evolution as a band has been very interesting to me and I'll probably just wind up checking this out just out of curiosity. Steel Panther, while they were recently formed, these guys do not count as a fresh face because they are parodying a very old sound, which by the way, I love these guys and I will absolutely be listening to a new release because I love laughing and they're hilarious. Tarja, former singer of Nightwish, uh, can't say that I'm looking forward to it to be honest. Testament, I actually love their new shit a lot more than their old shit, and Alex Skolnick is ridiculous. I actually am looking forward to this one. Tony Iommi is releasing some solo stuff. I have literally no idea what to expect, so I can't really grade it. Tool, I will believe it when I see it. Venom Incorporated, or Venom Inc, or whatever, I don't know. I, and I was looking it up, and is it Venom? Is it Venom Inc? I couldn't tell, uh, no. Vimic, the super group with Joey Jordanson. Um, the singles were pretty cool for the last two years. I'm interested to see what they can do with a full album. While She Sleeps, A Fresh Face. Uh, these guys are pretty cool and relatively new. Uh, I'm, I'm excited to see what they could do next. Whitechapel, also a fresh face. Um, I admire their talent, really not my thing. And uh, shout out to uh, guys from Tennessee, Knoxville. X Japan was the last one on the list, and I was very shocked to see them on here. I think I only really like one song of theirs that I've ever listened to, and so yeah, no, I'm not uh, not really excited for this one. So again, total bands that they have listed for release in 2019, 65, and we're gonna minus one because Andy Black does not fucking count, so that's 64 bands. Total Fresh Faces, Eight. Total bands that I would say have somewhat of a shot of breaking the mainstream, five. Total bands that I would personally say are trying to break some conventions, seven. Does anyone else see a problem here? Only 12.5% of the bands that were reported on in this article and in their most anticipated, which I think that plays into this a little bit, we'll get into that. Only 12% of the bands that they reported our fresh faces. Now, I will grant him this. It is highly unusual to have this many big name A-listers and established names in metal and rock release all in the same year. And a bunch of the new faces that I know and love had really big years in 2017 and 2018. But a lot of these bands that are on this list really had their heyday in the 80s and 90s. Were there really no other acts or new faces releasing in 2019? The answer is no, there were. And they missed some pretty big names that I'm a little surprised, especially with some of the weird ass fucking names they included on this list. Let's go to some of the ones that they missed that I think they should have included. One, Baby Metal. Not only a fresh face, not only breaking some conventions, but absolutely has a shot of breaking the mainstream. I know there's a lot of metal heads out here that despise this band, and you know what? Fine. But if you really want to try and play the let's get metal to the top game, 
this is your best Trojan horse you have available to you. They are an online phenomenon that normies who are starting to get into K-pop and J-pop could latch onto because of the familiarity of the kawaii fucking voice, which trust me, grates on my ears too. And considering how big baby metal is across the world, I am absolutely shocked they were not included on this list. Could be that it wasn't confirmed, although I don't know, because there's some bands on that list that also weren't 100% confirmed for 2019. So I don't know, man. Baroness, a fresh face and also trying to break some conventions. I absolutely love the Red Album. You'll put frickin' Andy Black on this list, but you'll snub Baroness. That makes absolutely no sense to me, man. Fever 333, not technically new faces, although they have recently formed together, but uh, I would say they have a pretty decent shot at breaking the mainstream. They have Rage Against the Machine vibes with some modern tones and some modern hip hop and rap and pop stuff mixed in. I wouldn't say it's trying too hard to be very different, but again, if we're premising this at the beginning of your article by trying to say that this may be the heyday for rock and metal to come back into the spotlight, these guys are a good way of trying to do that. I'm listing Gojira off here, not because I think they have any shot or because they're a new face, but because I'm just shocked that they were not included on this list. And yeah, I think they are trying to break some musical conventions. Red Fang, I'm barely qualifying them as a new face, and I don't even love these guys. I just love their don't give a shit attitude. They're a hell of a lot of fun. Volbeat. Not technically a new face, although I've only found out about them in the last couple of years, and I haven't really heard anyone talk about them except for the last couple of years. These guys also have another decent shot at breaking the mainstream. I know there's a lot of contention over this band because they're very accessible, and I guess some people consider them butt rock or whatever. Look, just because it's mainstream doesn't mean it's garbage. These guys can actually write some good songs. Joanne Shaw Taylor. Now, this definitely is not metal. This is more on the rock, southern fried side, and technically blues. Even though she's been touring around since she was 16, I haven't seen any releases go beyond 2009, so I'm calling her a fresh face. Not only that, but if you want to market her to the country market, absolutely could break through the mainstream. She kicks ass. She is a hell of a blues player with some really cool southern fried vibes, especially from a little British darling. Rock and roll, man. Within the Ruins, almost a fresh face, but I would definitely say breaking some conventions. I think they will be releasing something more badass than at least a third of the people on the list provided by Loudwire and they're at least trying to push some boundaries. Bad Wolves, um, I would consider them fresh faces. I would also consider them able to break the mainstream. I'm not even really a big fan of these guys, but they have the ability of pushing the future of metal for one. And not only that, their cover of Zombie absolutely broke the mainstream. They did great. It sucks that it took a cover to do that, but it opened more people's ears to metal. Again, I only bring up accessibility and marketability in my arguments because that is how this article was framed. And to quote him again, he believes this could be a new dawn for the beloved genres. From the list of old fogies that was presented to me, I would say it's more like a pretty sunset. Now again, I'm not trying to talk smack on Loudwire. I know that they definitely do cover some fresh faces more often than not. And I'm pretty sure at the bottom of that article was just a copy and paste of their most anticipated albums. It's very hard to anticipate albums from bands you're not familiar with. At the end of the day, these guys are a publisher and they need to get clicks to their website. So using names that people are familiar with means that they're gonna get more clicks. So who are the ones that are clicking on this, reinforcing that this is the habit that Loudwire should be doing? That would be you and me. Now I have no idea what the effect of having this many A-list and established names in rock and metal all release in one year. I have no clue what that's gonna do. But if I had to guess, Probably not much. One, just according to a numbers game, not all of these are gonna be good. Some of them have to suck. Two, next to no one is trying to change the game. It's either more of the same stuff that we've always had, and that's had such good success breaking through the mainstream before, or a lot of it is these people trying to adopt the shittier parts of pop and mainstream music. Now, I hear a lot of people complain about pop and how it has all of this mainstream success. I mean, first of all, it's the definition of pop. But, and it does all sound the same to a degree, but there's also is some variety to it as well. But then they complain that metal has no mainstream success when they're not trying many things that are different, when most of the bands that we're anticipating 
are old faces that we've known for decades. Could it possibly be that the reason why there's no mainstream success is because both fans and bands alike have their nostalgia goggles on just a little bit too tight? And understanding that I'm a progressive metalhead here, I didn't include Periphery or Dream Theater in the people that I considered breaking conventions. When they first started doing their thing, or when you first discover these bands, you're like, holy crap, that's so different. But then as you listen to their whole discography, you're like, oh, that's just kind of what they're about. Which, by the way, credit to both of them for pioneering some awesome sounds that almost no one has taken and run with. And if some of them have, either they haven't done it very well or they're being ignored. That's fucking irritating. A whole lot of what we're getting in 2019 is a whole lot of the same. If that's what you want, that is what you'll get. And if you enjoy it, that's great. I am happy you enjoy it. You do not get to bitch about not breaking into the mainstream if you're just going to continue to do the same unaccessible thing over and over again. Most of what I saw in this list was not only more of the same, I wouldn't call it fresh by any means. And the stuff that was fresh was fucking obnoxious at best. This isn't me trying to knock metal. I love metal. But times change. And if your sound doesn't change with those times, you're going to be left in the dust. I expect metalheads will love most of the releases that are going to be coming out this year. And that is great. I am very happy for you. But trying to use this as a premise that this could be our shot back in the spotlight, no. And who knows, I could be misreading this whole thing, everyone could be trying something very new and super edgy and cool, and I, I hope I'm wrong and that I'm very surprised with some amazing releases this year. I just think it's funny that we're talking about how to get this back into the spotlight and back into the mainstream when metal by its nature doesn't give a shit about being liked or not. Not only that, but I mean, just back to the premise, I, there's so many fresh faces out there that are being neglected. Until I see the next generation being promoted by websites like this, by more fans, and by more bands, established names who should be doing the future some credit, I still think we're going to be playing second fiddle to Cardi B. Let that sink in. This has been Mike, the music snob. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Rock on!